So it's not far anymore, even the uh, shields, uh, traffic shields, they say, uh, where it is. Bloody cold tonight. It's windy and cold. You can manufacture weapons and you can purchase ammunition, but you can't buy valor and you can't pull arrows off an assembly line. So a sergeant said this. Well, Vela is, um, you don't write Vela like this, guys. It's not English. And uh, so here at Omaha Beach, apparently this is uh, American soil. They, uh, they uh, sort of bought it, so you have to pass sort of a customs here with all sort of police and all that. So you pass into American uh, territory. Well, I'm not going in there. Fuck no. It's really, it's like a uh, uh, like an airport or something. So this is Omaha Beach, the same sort of a water like uh, the, where the Washington Monument is. Look at it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. that's horrible. And I th apparently. Yeah, so what I wanted to show you, and to get in here, oh, man, the, 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 the security, it's, it's enormous, I mean. So this is what I wanted to show you, this is where I came for. Look, there it is, like on the dollar. Here, it's all over, this is where they died for. This is the 666, June 6th, at 6 o'clock. And this is why they gave their lives for. It was a sacrifice. Look. Here, there's the dollar. I probably find more things. It's all here. But, so so why do they put the dollar here on all this? Why? Why do you think? And why like on the uh, under a tree here? And uh, at the exterior side. Look at it. Just under a tree. Because it's raining, it's like half snowing. And uh yeah, and these funny things here, I don't know what that is, very funny. So, I'll show it again once more, there it is, like on the dollar, yeah, nice, the all-seeing eye, the Horus. Novus Ordo Cyclorum. So for the new world order, they just had to get rid of a couple of Euro a couple of whiteies, a couple of Euro Europeans, because uh, they want to raise a human race, a, a a farmed race of slaves. So these were like special forces and the most intelligent, the most beautiful, the most strong of humanity, and they, uh, well, they had to disappear. You know. Only the workers could stay, the ones who made the uh, Liberty boats and all that. Right. Right. So that's symbolically for the ashes of the, of the dead. But it means also our gra the grain, the grail, sorry. Our blood is here. And, uh, well, here you can read it. Or maybe not, maybe it's too far. Uh, this is about the war. And uh, here as well. I don't think you can read this here like this. <laughs> Look at the compass. <laughs> yeah, the compass. That's the other side. Our fellow countrymen. <laughs> Sacrifices. It says. <sighs> That's almost, that's the same as the, uh, the CIA. 
with the uh, the uh, NATO symbol in it. Well, let's have a closer look. Well, it says this embattled shore f portal of free, and yeah, no, I say free, freedom, well, etc. And, uh, well, looks like the bull's horns, especially from the other side. Sacrifice of mankind. Hmm. And here we can see a wall with engraved all the names all around there here. Yeah. Probably with all the man that fell. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. All the names, it's all around. It's, it's, it's a lot. Sign here on the other side of the wall. We can see the, the seal of the, uh, of the United States. With here the flag of Israel. There. In it, like on the dollar. And uh, <laughs> here it says 666. What oh, nice, eh? Ooh. 6th June, June the 6th, which is the 6th month at 6 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So this is the other side of the. Uh, it says the American. Uh, where is it? Uh, Monument Commission. Battle American Battle Monument Commission. Well, and that's the uh, cemetery again. I know it's fast. I can take up my camera. It's still raining, so um, yeah, I'm standing under a tree. I don't know if I want to film there. This was the monument with the 666 down that wall. Oh, you can see it. And the uh, the dollar on the other side. Well, what, what has the dollar to do with this? It's all about money and power. Here we go. We're being watched all over. Probably looking at me. I mean, in France, uh, it wouldn't be. This is a, this is little America here. And I don't fancy it all. I prefer France. And here, so this is cemetery. We're gonna have a look now. There. Somebody playing golf here. Yeah. Okay. So this is an octagon, octagon. They're the ones who ordered the Templars. And here's a flag here and all that, you know, American flag, octagon. Don't be mistaken, octagon is very much alive. There's another one, it's very real. Okay, I have to put my cam inside, it's wet. So there's a couple of Jews here as well, Baumgart. Ohio and uh, here's some more see Hebrews there's some more so they died as well so um, it's not them it's not them we're looking for it's the um, it's the nobility the black nobility the Templar Switzerland they're the ones we're looking for I mean, if the Jews like would have had all the power, as many people say, then why are they live, lying here? He's just a sergeant, look. Just a sergeant. He's not even a colonel telling us what to do. <sighs> See what I mean? I'm not a Jew lover or something, but you just have to be honest, you know. Uh, I really want to have the, uh, the enemy within. I want to have them nailed. See, well, I mean, this is a proof. This is not, it's not fake, you know. Yeah, as well. Probably it's just a plain soldier. Yeah, see what I mean? It's Switzerland, the Templars, the Nazi Templars, the Freemasons, the Pharaohs. They're the ones. Row up. Yeah, there it says Gottlieb. 
just a private nothing more just a simple private uh, it's Switzerland they did it they finance it they're the ones they're the Templars all the rest is crap it's the Pharaohs the nobility the Per A so yeah more proofs octagon and all that the all-seeing eye the pyramid the Pharaohs so here inside like in the uh, church we see Isis the Statue of Liberty it has seven uh, thing, uh, things on it like on the uh, the monument I uh, filmed before mm. and uh, well, I can't really see the everything so maybe I'll look at it later and here's sort of a uh, an altar an altar so this is for the Christians I suppose and a, a little one for the Hebrew people uh, don't even have very much. Uh, and uh, so this for the Christians, for the Hebrews, and up there it's for the Pharaohs, Isis. And uh, so here's part of the cemetery. That's where I was before. Uh, and uh, the graves are marble, if you want, if you'd like to know, it's real marble, must have cost a fortune. All this marble, the forest of marble statues. So that's for the Christians, and they say, through the gates of death may they pass to their joyful resurrection. And that's for the Hebrews on the other side, the other blokes there, the uh, Ten Commandments. And it says from their book, think not only upon their passing, remember the glory of their spirit. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody remembers me, what I'm trying to show you. Okay. So there's the cross. And there's again for the other blokes there. Yeah, all right. And uh, that's that. This here. Too bad it's raining. I hear a bell. Bells of glory. So this here at Omaha Beach, this is where the man had to climb up to. They're probably machine gun nests and all that. Look, it's like 45 degrees deep. So, um, you know, it will cost, uh, it will cost a lot of lives. You know that beforehand. Well, the general was in his ship there probably. The, the Pharaoh and the Freemason, he picked this out because it's so difficult, you know, as it is a sacrifice. So uh, he said to the man, well, you go here and then uh, it's easy to kill you, to send the, uh, the, the, uh, the grenades and the cannons and the machine guns, you know, it's so easy to kill you here. That's the Horus Matrix, it is, you know, yeah, it's, uh, you know, like... 
Look, look, it's steep, you know, it's it's more than, it, it's, it's 60 degrees here. You know, it will cost a lot. It was done by purpose, a sacrifice, yeah. And the generals always send you there, where he can kill you. You understand now? They send you there where he can kill you. Where the pharaohs can kill the Europeans. Get up the hill, the generals shouted. And the ones who didn't, they got shot by the generals. Executed. Get up the hill, you know, so we can kill you. We, the generals, kill you. And the other generals, they give the orders to the other soldiers, they do it. And the Jews, who didn't want to... Uh, they say, well, I'm not going to go in the army, I might get killed. And it's again my religion, I don't do that. So the pharaohs had to find another solution for that. The final solution they did. And the Jews still don't want to go in the army, the orthodox ones, even if it's the Israeli army, like. So uh, this is the Horus Matrix. Just get up the hill and the, the generals kill you, the pharaohs. So to, uh, we are a farmed human race, it is. So it's Omaha Beach. So here's the sea, the D-Day Sea. There's uh, Point de Hoc. Where, oh, I don't see him really. Where they had to climb up really steep, which we see in all the movies. And uh, well, here's like Omaha Beach. Get up here, sons of bitches. I'm your general, I'm the Pharaoh. I'm the Templar. Uh, I'm in the Freemasonry Lodge, get up here so I can kill you. And my other general friends in the German army, they can kill you. There's a uh, machine gun nest here or whatever. We're gonna kill you. It was a sacrifice. A 666 sacrifice. Well, I showed you the number there. It's even there. Uh, don't believe your generals. Don't believe the politicians. They're all lying. Believe the magic circle there. See? I mean, be your own general. A warrior doesn't take orders. And between the uh, the beach, the Omaha Beach, and the uh, the machine guns and uh, the hill, they could have done a bit of jungle warfare. Well, isn't it nice? See, probably full of loads of bodies still in here, skeletons. It's all here: jungle warfare, beach warfare, hill warfare. Nice, eh? Just feel like in Hollywood, you know, that's, they want you to think you're going to be the hero, like feeling in a Hollywood movie. And the general just wants to have you dead. Dead. You know. Don't be a soldier, be a warrior. Fight the enemy within. And not the other soldier in other uniform. So here we got a double version of Isis, or let's say the sisters of Isis, with uh, with Horus, the falcon god, and Horus, Horus is the child which he raised alone, you know, without the man. There it is again. So that means we have the man kill each other, and they all die, so we can raise mankind new from scratch. The only one missing here is like Seth or Osiris. I have no clue where the bugger is. And this actually is the biggest sun hieroglyph I've ever seen. The bar on each side, as I show in the Pharaoh show. And here in the middle, you got the round thing. I showed from the other side. Okay, do it very slowly for you. So this is the sun. Remember the Pharaoh show, the round thing in the middle. Here's the sun. Yeah, so we go all around here, uh, as I showed in all these houses. 
Yeah. Well, there you go. One bar on one side here. It's about two soccer fields long. You know, like on the houses. And then we got the sun in the middle and the two bars on each side. That's on the houses. It's all symbology. And we got the other one here. And this is the original Isis with Horus. The, uh, as I showed before, with the, uh, the whole thing of this here, the sacrifice, the 666 sacrifice, is the Horus Matrix to raise mankind, the man, new from scratch. And the women, they, uh, the witches, they have this, uh, the white witches, they have an alliance with Seth, or Seth on, Mr. Hitler, you know, and all the others. So, I showed this before, so this is a, uh, a chicken, or a, uh, a rooster. So this is La Marianne, because it's on French soil, which is Isis as well, as Venus, Venus for the perverts, ah, that was a joke and for the Romans, and uh, Helvetia for the Swiss, and the, uh, st the Statue of Liberty for the Yanks. So, um, and that's Isis, La Marianne, because the Statue of Liberty was given by the French Masons, the uh, uh, Sœurs. Uh, yeah, so this is the Sun hieroglyph. That's Isis with the falcon. says World Peace Statue. Oh, Here in Normandy Beach. of Omaha Beach. All sort of animals are coming to me now. What's that? Nice. Thank you. So this is Omaha Beach. Here's a magic circle. Mushrooms made it. It's called the magic circle. Maybe I'm going to stand in between it. Let's see what happens. There it is. So here's Omaha Beach. You can hear the sea. And here's the uh that's the cemetery. Oh, that's so big. So this is European spirituality and uh, belief against all the uh, of the foreign powers, all their beliefs who are, are very foreign to us. And uh, we are being forced to believe in all these pharaonic beliefs and all that. And the results, I mean, well, this is the result of all that. Yeah. Go back to the British Airmen, who undaunted by odds, and wearied in their constant challenge and mortal danger are turning the tide of the world war by their prowess and by their devotion. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. All our hearts go out to the fighter pilots whose brilliant actions we see with our own eyes day after day. Can, can I ask you something in English? Of course you can. So you were... Anything you want. So you were a Spitfire pilot? I flew Spitfire, yeah. but I flew also other fighters. Okay. Bow fighters. What was that? Faux fighters, yeah? Bow fighters. Bow yeah. fighters, yeah, okay. Yes. A very good machine. So you were, in, you were a wing commander yes. during the Battle of Britain? 
Nein, mit Better Britain war ich noch nicht wegen Commander. Okay, okay. Ja, yeah, but, but, but you flew during the Battle of Britain? Nein, auch noch nicht. Da okay. war ich in der Ausbildung. In, in English, in English. I was, I was being taught. Ja. Yeah. Wo ich an das Stückchen da runtergefallen Ah, okay. Liegt das irgendwo da drüben? Um, so, so, Mr. Gruber, you were a, uh, in the 135th wing. Yes. So, so there's three squadrons in a wing. Yes. And you were a wing commander. I was a wing commander. In the RAF. In the Royal Air Force. And you fought the Germans during the Second World War. I fought the Germans, yes. Yeah. Well, Mr. Churchill, he said, never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few, and so well, listen here. So you're one of those. He meant not me. He meant those boys that fought the Battle of Britain. Yeah. Verstehen Sie? In English. English. In England. First of all, the Battle of Britain was won against Hermann Göring's Luftwaffe. Yeah. And. Uh, you remember maybe the Dunkirchen, yeah. Dunkirk. Yeah. They, the Germans stopped their attacks, Guderian. They could have taken all the other prisoners. But I heard, listen good, listen to me. Yeah. But Hitler thought, he thought, he could win the British to fight with him, the Russians. That's why he let them escape yes. from Dunkirchen back to England. Mm -hmm. But of course, the English, they had a man, they, they called Winston Churchill, they would have never gone against the Russians with the Germans, no. never in, the, in, in their lives. That wasn't planned. That, that was not his art. So, that, so that was not his way of thinking, his way of handling things. So Mr. Raymond Gruber, he's from Luxembourg and he was I'm a... Luxembourg. Yes. He was a pilot in the area fighting, um, fighting the Germans and flying this, this lovely airplane here and others. So, it's, Mr. It's, Gruber, in, uh, so on Christmas you were sitting here all alone. So what? And New Year's Eve as well. You know, listen here. Yeah. That doesn't make a fucking difference. <laughs> <laughs> so sad as the Englander. Yeah. Listen here, you live once. And I have also overlived my times already. Yeah. Because when I sat in that plane, I never thought I would get 91 years of age. Can you imagine? 91 years. Oh, it's uh, enormous. It's fantastic. Yeah. But I, I think it's a bit sad that, I mean, uh, Mr. Churchill said, well, the, the famous phrase, like, never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. And now you're sitting here all alone. But and he meant, yeah, I know, I know. He meant not me. Yeah. He but, meant but anyway, you were, you were in the RAF. That and fought the, the Germans. Yeah. You understand? During the Battle of Britain. During the Battle of Britain, yes. Yeah, but you fought the Germans in the RAF. I was also in the, in London during the Battle of Britain. Oh, yeah. Because we were bombed every night. Yeah. And then came out these verfluchten. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. This politician Churchill said. And 70 years later, in 2013, the Luxembourgian wing commander Raymond Gruber of the 135 wing 
and World War II Spitfire fighter pilot of the RAF. He spends his Christmases all alone in his apartment where he never comes out anymore, imprisoned by his 91 years, alone and forgotten. So don't you go wage war in Iraq or Afghanistan for these politicians and for the financial elite, because no one will be thankful to you. You'll just end up as a human wreck with a TV switch in your hand, alone and forgotten. Or even worse. So this here is like the, uh, the crown of Isis, there's on the Statue of Liberty. And the, uh, the triangles here are slightly lifted, which we can see on the Statue of Liberty as well. And there are seven, I think. So this is off Ranch in Omaha Beach. Uh, there it says Omaha Beach. Here are six, we can see here six things for its um, pyramids like. That's the, um, the, like the Statue of Liberty, or it is seven, I don't know. Uh, Patton, statue. Yeah, hi tubers, we're here today, and uh, I know you guys all know Sean very well. You don't know me. Sean's made a lot of effort with the Pharaoh show making a lot of effort and putting a lot of videos in. I'm Flying Trader from the YouTube, Flying Trader 1, and uh, I've been in touch with Sean. He's made the effort to come up all the way up here, four days hitchhiking, and I made the effort to fly over to France to meet him. And we're here at a memorial of the satanic ritual that was the D-Day landings uh, carried out by these things that uh, Sean and uh, many many of us now in the world are becoming aware of the ferro lineage the blood lineage and I've come over basically to meet up with Sean to discuss the deeper issues behind this and that is the issues that the things behind the pharaonic bloodline are in fact not human entities this is something that we a lot of people on the tube are waking up to um, the reptilian agenda and um, their boss which is in fact Saturn and Isis um, it's a well-known fact that they allowed the D-Day landings to happen 
on the sixth day of the sixth month at the sixth hour. And that particular massacre, when we actually had air superiority, they allowed these poor American kids and British soldiers to run up the beach into withering machine gun fire where they were slaughtered in, 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 in their thousands. Um, this despite the fact that at the time the RAF and the American Air Force had air superiority but they chose to do it on a, on a day of the six month at the six hour <laughs> and um, you know we're putting all these facts together now we're starting to understand these things these people and all of us need to make more effort to get together like Sean and I have done um, to understand more about what's going on in this world and so that these things will never happen again so that we will never have to go to war for these ISIS worshipping Satanists and um, you know we're making the effort guys and um, I'd like to give a shout out to some guys that we know are also making big effort Let's Get Free 3 and uh, Pocolo986 who's there's a lot of information um, on Pocolo986's channel about these reptilian entities we need to wake up to them they are a reality they are not human in any way shape or form and they worship Satan, Saturn, and their business is death. And as we all know, and as Sean very often has pointed out, it's international bankers behind this. Um, the Swiss have financed wars on both sides. They were financing Hitler, they were financing the Americans. Um, international banking is responsible for a lot of evil and um, I think it's, you know, we're very small at the moment. There's a lot of you guys out there who I know who care about this issue. And like I said, I've come here to try and explain to Sean the deeper elements of really what's going on here. Um, it's not just a question of secret societies and masons and international banking, we understand that. But we, we need to dig deeper and go further into this, you know, what is happening? You know, what, what are these symbols about? What do they mean? and we're starting to understand what they mean. They mean a different bloodline, and that different bloodline are the reptilians. So uh, this is Flying Trader 1, as you said. Uh, Flying Trader 1, um, do you think, I know the Swiss are very, very cold, cold-hearted, they have no hearts, they take decisions only money-wise and financially elite. They were in no war at all, it's very, um, uh, do you think they might be reptilians? I think that there are a lot of reptilians. I think at the end of the day, we've got to understand that international banking are the ones responsible for financing war. And, you know, they're brewing up now for a war in Syria, war for oil. We've got to wake up to the war for oil. We've got to wake up to what they're doing. They're taking young kids out of Iowa, out of the United States. They're pushing them into Afghanistan. They're pushing them into Syria. They're pushing them in here, there and everywhere. And they're doing it in our name. And it's only by people like Sean and people like, you know, there are a lot of guys on YouTube who do a lot of great work and people like yourselves. And really what we're trying to say is give you encouragement to keep it up, you know, keep waking the world up because so this will never happen again and that we never have to go through these things again. You know, we need to do this for the future, for our children, for our families. Uh, sure, we're well aware that the International Banking Center of Switzerland, we know this. We know that international banking is responsible for a lot of evil in this world. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we know that the uh, all the financial elite, the with nobility, they all go skiing there. Yeah. Uh, so no, they, they're skiing and they're paying no taxes. I know Switzerland and, uh, is the base of the pharaohs. Uh, so uh, you might say you're into reptilians and and uh, lizards. So uh, would, would would you say that Switzerland is the base of the reptilians? I wouldn't say. I, I, we, we don't know, Sean. Is the honest is the honest is, is the honest fact? You know, the truth. Yeah, it's a it's a very 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 evil place in terms of what it finances and what they get up to. We know that um, international banking is responsible for all of this, and uh, we need to wake up to it. But more importantly, we need to wake up that we have an intraspecies predator amongst us, and this is a fact. And they are very clever. They're very patient and they're very ritualistic, as you can see. Ritual is very, very important to them. The obelisks, 
the pyramids, you know, it's never ending everywhere you turn. And the more, you know, Sean, if you go into Sean's videos, dig deep into it, understand the symbolism, understand what it means. And um, hopefully, slowly, we'll start getting together more people like us and we'll start trying to make some changes, waking the world up to what's really going on here. So that something like this hopefully never has to happen again. So you think they're not human? I believe a lot of them are, are not human. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Flying Trader One. You're welcome. Good, Good to, to know meet you, you, mate. And it's been a pleasure. <laughs> so this is Omaha Beach where they landed. And, and we are here, Avranche. Uh, it looks like a pyramid here, you know, like... Uh... Oh, by Flying Trader. He's a great guy. Very good. So all the wars about raising a new human race. The best of mankind, the best of man. They all died as cannon fodder in all these wars, you know, on the, on the battlefields. So, the most intelligent ones, and so the sisters of Isis, after the system of, uh, of Horus, they could raise a new, a new man, obeying all orders, not thinking too much, like a garden gnome. Okay, well that's a warrior stuff. A warrior doesn't need any orders. It means the grain, our descendants is here, our blood is here. Uh, look, there he is, the criminal. The Pharaoh, well look at him. You think that's a European? Get out of here. It's a stupid thing anyway, taking orders from somebody. Kill that one, kill this one. I mean, what a stupid idea, you know? A warrior doesn't take any orders. You know, he can, he can make his own orders. Get out of here. What a waste of human material. What a waste. For a flag, you know? I mean, look at all these names, they're dead for nothing. Look at all these names. What a waste. Probably 19 years old, 20 years old. Well, they didn't fit into the horrors idea. Uh, I got watched all these names. What a waste! You know, it's everywhere. That's the horrors matrix. So all these people didn't—they just didn't pass selection after the uh, the idea uh, the idea of the uh, the horrors matrix and the sisters of Isis. Uh, and their children didn't have any father, you know, to, uh, to tell them what life is all about. So the biggest enemy are our own generals and presidents. That's the enemy, not the soldier in another uniform. Speaking another language, that's the enemy. This is a message to the Russian army and the Russian people. This great Russian Major General Konstantin P. Petrov saw the Pharaoh show and knows how the Nazi Templars of Octagon, Switzerland were the brain behind World War II who are responsible for the murder on 25 million Russians because the Swiss Nazi Octagon Templars financed and ordered Hitler throughout the whole war. Let's team up. Сейчас э, вот это то, что многие политики называют мировое правительство, силы Запада, там, как Жириновский, мировое, за кулисы, это и есть. И сейчас, начи начиная со времен Древнего Египта, вот эта мафия, которая управляет процессами на, на планете Земля, она мигрировала, и сейчас ее основная штаб-квартира это Швейцария. Кстати, вот информация к размышлению, многие 
Зрители наверняка смотрели фильм «17 мгновений весны» про Штирлиц. Если там помните, вот вся Европа полыхала в пожарах войны, а доктор Плечнер кормил лебедей в Женевском озере и спрашивает, если фюрер был такой лихой малый, то почему бы ему не взять и не грабануть швейцарские банки, там же ведь деньги, золото лежало, а Гитлер туда не пошел. То есть Швейцария была неприкосновенной. Почему? Да потому что Гитлер прекрасно понимал, что в Швейцарии находятся его хозяева. И весь победный марш Гитлера по Европе был ничем иным, как сдача ему под единое руководство всего людского, промышленного и военного потенциала Европы для броска на СССР. А зачем? А дело в том, что, осуществляя вот эту самую глобализацию, вот эти глобализаторы, они подвели человечество к глобальному системному кризису. И... This rare picture shows Adolf Hitler in Zurich, Switzerland in 1923, when the Swiss Templars financed him 30,000 Swiss francs, which is about half a million euros today, for the first financing only. And for the rest of the war, the Swiss Nazi Templars gave all the orders and made the concentration camps possible, even ordering them. These are all Swiss Nazi Templars' ideas. Ее уже мы продаем, я вот помню маленьким мальчиком, то есть я из-под крана запросто воду пьешь, и в общем -то, никаких проблем, а теперь из-под крана вряд ли кто воду пьет, даже детишки уже не пьют, они знают, бутылочки надо покупать, продавать там, из них водичку пить. Следующая проблема вот в этом смысле, чтобы представить ее, как она решается, вот представьте, мы та самая мафия, мы живем в Швейцарии. Вот. А в Чернобыле как жахнуло, как говорил Петруха, помните, в белом солнце пустыне. И радиоактивное облачко может до нас докатиться, и с неба дождичек может покапать. It's a dominion that uh, it doesn't belong to Switzerland. It's like the Vatican or the city of London or uh, Washington, the base. It's very important, very big criminals, very big criminals dealing with Hitler. And, and I, don't, I don't remember exactly how it was, but this is uh, the most financial site of the um, of the uh, financial uh, things going on like in the dark like you know uh, there's not many people who know about this so this is the biz bis um, it's like a territory on its own in basel switzerland when on august 30th 1923 in Zurich the Swiss and the Swiss army under general Ulrich Wille started to finance Hitler with 30,000 Swiss francs which is half a million dollars today they already knew that in order to rob Europe of its gold reserves it needed a special bank to do so so in 1930, May 17th, when it had become clear that their man would become the next German Chancellor in 1933, the sly Swiss, together with Hitler's bankers Jalmar Schacht and Emil Pohl, founded the Bank für Internationalen Zahlungsausgleich, the BITS, B-I-Z, and told the world that its purpose would be for Germany to pay their World War I reparation payments, but the criminal Swiss mind had entirely different plans with it. So here we can see a picture of Jalmar Schacht. Jalmar is a um, Scandinavian name because his mother, she was the Baroness Constance Justine Sophie von Eggers. And um, so here we can see that again the um, the Per A, the black nobility, is involved 
the pharaonic per a. So um, this guy is of from his mother's side is of pharaonic per a descent. They 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 did the whole war, you know, the the pharaohs. This is a pharaoh. In English, this sinister bank, the bank of the Nazis, got notorious under the name of the Bank for International Settlements, the BIS, the BIS, who did indeed, on May 26, 1939, stole the gold reserves of Czechoslovakia in England itself. So World War II could be financed. So it is no wonder why the Nazis didn't invite, invade Switzerland. It is curious, though, why the Allies didn't in 1945. But the answer is quite simple, because they're all on the Swiss pay list. All governments in the world are being run through a worldwide web of Freemasons who get their orders from Octogon, the motherland and original home of the Templars. It is indeed this little country, the little dirty pig with the cross, that rules the entire world and the Swiss are the biggest crooks in the world who can only lie and cheat and have absolutely no conscience at all. Just a complete lack of it. The Swiss are responsible for all world wars and the murder of millions of people and their children. They brought death, bloodshed, total catastrophe, mass murder and misery over Europe and the Muslim world as well. And no government in the world will ever stand up against them because they're all part of the Templars Mafia of Octagon. Switzerland is called the Little Dirty Pig because of their country's resemblance with a pig, as you can see here on the, uh, on the picture here showing uh, the uh, country Switzerland, the map. So this is a map of Switzerland. Uh, Geneva lies here, Bern, the capital is here, Basel is about here, Zurich is here, the Italian speaking part is here, uh, Stad it's about here, and St. Moritz is about here. So this is a map of Switzerland which looks like a pig, and they even call it the dirty little pig with the cross. As we can see in this video, this bank of banks still exists today. It's a central bank of central banks and only deals with central banks. All its members, employees and even their families enjoy total diplomatic immunity and stand above all laws. They can rape a child, do satanic rituals and get away with it. They have carte blanche to violate all human and God's laws. And no legal jurisdiction can be applied to them. No government in the world has inside authority in this bank. And the ground it stands on is extraterritorial, where not even the Swiss police can step into, except when you videotape it from the outside. And then the Swiss police comes and ter terrorizing you. I had to run after I filmed it. This obscure bank made World War II possible by laundering looted gold from for the German Reichsbank and by transferring gold reserves of other European nations to the Nazis. This sinister bank can be compared to a stealth bomber. It flies high and fast, is undetected, has a small crew and carries a huge payload. And if we look at their logo of this bank, it has the same red and white colours as the Swiss Templars flag of the little dirty pig. Where the square, being us and lower base of the pyramid and hierarchy, being encircled by the oval, which is them. With the crosshairs of a rifle scope aiming at us, the square. The Oval is a Freemason symbol as the Oval Office and many other logos. I'm receiving murder threats from the Swiss Police and Justice Department. 
Because I open up my mouth. Please, someone help. The Swiss already murdered the Austrian Wolfgang Umfogel in 2010 and many others who talked about the Swiss banksters. Do Google Peter Odensov. He got murdered because he talked too much about the Swiss banks and he had proofs. So they suicided him. Well, it says again the bids, the bank for international uh, financial tra transactions. And look how it is. Well, they're already looking at me. Look, 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 look. Probably the cops coming now. This is the biggest criminal organization in the world. Here they finance Hitler and all that. So. In this video I will tell you why the Second World War started in 1939 and not before. It has to do with the biggest discovery of the 20th century in 1938. A full scale world war consumes a lot of oil and Hitler didn't have any. There is no oil to be drilled for in Germany. England got its oil, from, its oil from the US and Russia had its oil from the Caucasus region. Then the Bush Rockefeller Texas Oil Company Standard Oil found the world's biggest oil reserves in Saudi Arabia on March the 3rd 1938. So Hitler knew he could start his war. It only needed the time to stock the oil in Germany to guarantee a long war. And here we can see the uh, British royal family who came immediately when the oil was discovered. And in 1915 the Treaty of Darin in Saudi Arabia already had become a protectorate of the British Empire so they only had to look for the fitting ruler to make him king of the desert making Saudi Arabia a puppet regime of the British Empire. There they are again the British royal family in 1938 in Saudi Arabia. Oh they got filthy rich there didn't they? And here again on March the 4th 1938 only one day after the biggest discovery of the 20th century and making World War II and the murder of 50 million people possible. So a week later only after the, dis the biggest discovery of the oil in Saudi Arabia on March the 3rd, on March the 12th 1938 Hitler annexed Austria which was in fact the beginning of World War II. As a uh, consequence of the discovery of oil and uh, making World War II possible. Warships, bombers, fighter planes, armored vehicles, tanks, lorries and SS motorcycles cost an enormous amount of oil and this oil came from Saudi Arabia for the Germans. Here we can see the uh, Saudi king in, uh, on August the 17th in 1935, the same one who did the Hitler salute, visiting uh, Adolf in uh, 1938. So the, uh, the Saudi Arabs and the king knew exactly that exporting the war to Mr. Hitler it would cost the lives of millions of Europeans, enabling the Muslim conquest of Europe and replacing all the dead Europe Europeans starting right after the war. From this moment on they started to stock enormous reserves of oil in Germany and most of all in Romania as can, see, as can be seen here. All being made possible by the British Empire already knew there was oil to be found in the desert and therefore took a wild, savage and murderous Bedouin out of his tent away from his goat herd and made him a king of the oil desert in 1932. Abdul Aziz ibn al-Saud 
was so savage, in fact, that even the Turks and the Ottoman Empire didn't want him. He was notorious for drinking the blood of his dead adversaries. Well, he looks a bit like a devil here with the two horns, doesn't he? Uh, in fact, here he's together with the fascist Italian army. Um, for the British Empire, he's trailing to, trying to sell the um, the oil to all to all sides, so um, just the pharaohs can get rich of the uh, the European massacre. That's the uh, the main thing of the war. You know, just have the Europeans kill each other and, and uh, exterminate each other. That was the whole idea. Oh, look at the two horns, it looked like the devil, doesn't it? The British crown financed the butcher, gave him a palace, and on September 1933, the Standard Oil engineers started drilling for oil. Well, here we can see the octagon again. Octogon. It's all over where the power is. This here is the first uh, tanker leaving uh, Saudi Arabia on April the third, 30th, 1939. Uh, it has an American flag. So, only one and a half month later, after April the 30th, um, Ibn Saud, Al Saud, he sent his... Uh, Mr. Khalif al hut to see Mr. Hitler on June the 17th, 1939, in person. Now, why do you think the Arab who had just found the biggest oil reserve in the world came and see Hitler, who needed oil for his world war? Why do you think so? Well, Khalif al hut uh, he came discussing the petrol business, of course, because the Bedouin didn't want worthless paper money for his oil. Certainly not after the financial crisis of 1929. He told Adolf that he wanted gold and camels, and this is why the Nazis started looting gold all over Europe stealing the gold reserve from Poland, Czechoslovakia and other European countries and even taking it from the Jews' teeth. We can witness here the foundations being laid down between Muslims and Nazis which, hold, which holds on to this very same day. This video of the Arab visiting Adolf wasn't supposed to be shot since it was a top secret meeting. But, as Eva Braun, Hitler's Germanic mistress, was so bored, she was making videos all the time. And Hitler, the liar, never kept his promises to her. As he was full of empty promises to everyone, and in particular to the Germans. The other guy with the bowler hat here seems to be introducing the, uh, the Arab to the Germans. Watch his hand like. Uh, he doesn't fit into the whole context here. He doesn't look very German. He doesn't have a uniform. So it might be uh, supposed that he's the, um, he's the sly Swiss banker here. The way he's smiling through his teeth and all that. It's the one who's putting up the whole deal. Right? Hitler, by the way, had this very non-Germanic way of thinking of women. A very Muslim way, just as Ibn al Saud, where a woman was supposed to shut up and obey a man's orders. Maybe Hitler even was a Muslim, who knows? So, when the wench was filming, as we can see here, this is Eva Braun with a lovely 16mm camera. When she was filming, nobody really took her serious, leaving us with one, if not the most important document of World War II. Al El Saud's messenger, Khalif Al Hut, doing the Heil Hitler salute, coming to get his gold and camels. Just as we see his son, Fad Al Saud, Al Saud, 
here doing business with Standard Oil's Bush. Oh, look at them holding hands. Oh, isn't that lovely, isn't it? Ibn al Saud was, of course, of pharaonic origin already. Oh, otherwise, the ruling world of worldwide pharaohs, as you can see here, would never have made him a king in 1932. A goat's herd shepherd becoming king at once? Can you imagine? And as a king, per a, and a ruler, he automatically had to become a Freemason as well. And here we can see Ibn al Saud, the guy who did business with the Nazis selling the, the oil, and standing together with the uh, with the English Queen. And watch what he's wearing around his neck. Yes, a Templar's cross. He's one of them. It's a Freemason sign and it is from a pyramid. Uh, this guy is a pharaoh. And very soon after the pharaonic world of Freemasonry started, started complaining about the, uh, the Muslims throwing stones in Mecca during the Hajj. So finally uh, Fahd el Saud he orchestrated the death of 200 pilgrims in 2004 as a reason to get rid of the obelisks and its stoning by replacing them with three ovals as in the oval office and symbol of Isis and the womb only enabling stoning the wall and never the sacred oval itself. So with this and the inviting of NATO soldiers in Saudi Arabia, the Hajj and one of the pillars of Islam became invalid by the destruction of the Jamarat after the image of Muhammad, the inventor of Islam, threw seven, sto who threw seven stones at the obelisk 700 years ago. So now back to the Second World War and the oil. Only how get the oil to Germany during a world war? For this reason the Swiss Nazi Templars of Octogon, Switzerland produced a huge and neutral merchant navy under Swiss flag under the camouflage of bringing food to the Swiss population and the British Per A aristocracy and American Freemasonry knew because they had set it all in place. Only the Russians didn't know. So here we can see it. We can read it here. This is a new Swiss vessel. They've got 41 very huge ships nowadays. And they had more during the Second World War. So here we can read it all. So Switzerland does have a navy. <laughs> Don't be mistaken. I mean, what's a, what's a Templar without a ship? You can't get to Jerusalem, can't he? Can he? So you can read it, the Second World War, what they did. Bringing oil to the Germans. Oh, that's Switzerland. That's Octogon. It's the way they are. Then the oil got shipped from the desert in neutral sh Swiss ships to Italy who were part of the fascist alliance and finally the oil went through Switzerland into Germany. Um, well here we can read about it. Well of course not everything but you can read they had a, uh, a, 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 a there was a Swiss navy during the war and uh, well they brought stuff to the Germans they did oh yeah and back the same way went stolen gold by the Nazis to the Gulf Arabs and al Saud. and after the war Octogon Switzerland and the Arab Gulf states were the richest people in the world 
you see King Al Saud and his British puppet regime in Arabia always stayed very thankful to Switzerland where it has a lot of money, land, houses, banks, petrol stations and other businesses running where they spent each summer around Lake Geneva where the destroyers of Europe, Switzerland and the ones who sold the oil celebrate their victory over Europe and of course it's very very possible that Al Saud arranged a scandal between Gaddafi and Switzerland in the Wilson Hotel about his son Hannibal and also the final downfall of Gaddafi and his oil rich Libya uh, Gaddafi has the uh, that uh, the Libyan tam oil is all over Switzerland so I suppose when Mr. El Sword saw this during his holidays he was not so pleased was he? so here we can see the widely spread Libyan tam oil uh, in Switzerland in Geneva and um, yeah I suppose Mr. El Sword he was not so happy about that so he might have well have been the uh, the cause of uh, the strife between uh, Switzerland and Gaddafi and um, the reason of his final downfall. So you can see the uh, German Messerschmitt fighter plane of the uh, Swiss Air Force during World War II, and the Swiss probably got them for free um, for helping the oil. From to, to get to Germany from Saudi Arabia um, Switzerland was the only country um, who got the Messerschmitt uh, 109E uh, um, well the same as the Germans so you see well, there's no crime in the world against humanity and against the Europeans that does not pass through Octagon Switzerland and it's Swiss Nazi Templars. Switzerland financed Hitler in 1923 and Hitler never attacked the giving hand who gave all the orders and provided oil to the war machine. Switzerland did it. From my experience of war and my life experience, me, Sean Ross of the Pharaoh Show in the Octagon series wrote this down once the difference between a warrior and a soldier it's called warrior versus soldier a warrior is able to take decisions himself a soldier needs a general to take up orders a warrior think autonomously and is spiritual a soldier takes drugs and alcohol it's from alcohol it's uh, from the Arab language which, me which means illusion a warrior has a code of honor. A soldier possesses neither conscience, conscience nor ethics. A warrior protects children because they're sacred. A soldier kills them, as in my lie, Auschwitz, in all air raids on cities and bombs on children's rooms, in all genocides, mass murders and massacres on civilians. All that soldiers enjoy doing so. It's supposed to be good for the esprit de corps or something of a kind. A warrior still remembers that the pharaohs precisely that way justified a police and an army through robber barons and gangsters who were they themselves as well. Equally as the two skyscrapers in America blown, blown up by the pharaohs themselves in order to justify further war crimes. A soldier doesn't care about all that. He's a pure instrument within. A soldier cultivates, a warrior cultivates sexual abstention and the sublimation of its energies caused through every ejaculation essentials as the liquid gold are being extracted through the spiral cord uh, within to the head the articulations feel non-grease and one becomes terrestrial without the higher force. A soldier rapes in war times and pays in peace times for it. A warrior eats and drinks only until 1500 hours, fast and doesn't drink until 1700 hours to consequ 
subsequently I only drink water until 1800 hours and finally fast without drinking until the next morning when rising. A soldier eats and drinks as a pig no, no matter when, what or how much. A warrior will continue to be so unto a highly progressed age. A soldier is worn out at the age of 35. A warrior is also strong and brave in a situation alone against many. A soldier only is strong and brave between brackets when many against few. A warrior follows his conscience and fights against injustice. A soldier is being led by the pharaohs, the demons, and always searches the strongest side and that of the oppressors. A warrior listens to the inner voice and the sixth sense. A soldier only listens to the voice of the pharaonic commander. A warrior is in no need to prove his masculinity all the time, like by oppressing others, for instance. Because he has full control over the knowledge, he shows his strength while playing. A soldier feels lost when hierarchy is not defined, as in a pack of wild animals who need the alpha leader. Mother, do raise as many warriors as possible so the pharaohs can't snatch your children to make soldiers out of them. And father, do understand that the rulers trap coming soldiers likewise by presenting them manhood, strength and virility in advance, though it can only be completed by initiations of a man whose ritual after the rules, laws and wisdom of the elders. For a warrior, fear form forms a natural element which can be interpreted. Because one can be warned for danger by it. A warrior's analysis says what's stronger, one that stands up out of the trenches, runs towards the enemy, gets a medal, posthumously, and celebrates the hero only because he cracked and couldn't deal with fear anymore. Is he stronger? Or is he stronger who remains in the trenches, deals with fear while noticing further on all warnings, lights of dangers, who looks fear straight in the, in the eyes and withstands it. Which one is stronger? A soldier gets trained into fearlessness, cause this way he better carries out the orders. Religious fanatics, political fanatics, of a furious cult or chauvinist fanatics, these are all the pharaonic rulers means to either create cannon fodder or instruments of terror. But of course, a warrior must be able to control his fear and under circumstances to be able to shut it off. But then only when he wants it and not when the others and their doctrines do want so or because fear just gets so overwhelming. But principally, he lives with fear as being a sixth sense ally. ally. A warrior enjoys and needs loneliness for balance and thus to complement himself. The soldier doesn't manage alone, nor without the so-called esprit de corps. He needs the family that the army substitutes him. A warrior doesn't need to talk without saying nothing. He is. A soldier must scream, shout and give orders, otherwise he's not feeling confirmed. A warrior matches himself against infinity and the ancestors for measure. A soldier matches himself against hierarchy and the enemy. A warrior is a modest person and doesn't seek glamour. A soldier collects medals for his outrages. Future warriors are being called by the inner quest. Future soldiers are lured in by the army by beta, strength, manhood and fearlessness to be gained thus presented in propaganda films as Hollywood evidently cause they don't possess any of them. A warrior dresses himself as he pleases. Soldiers all look alike in their force guard robe. A warrior is able to organize himself by direct communication as in non facet pugnum digitor uno. A soldier can only function in a given organization. A warrior rinses his nose several times a day in order to have a sharp mind. A soldier rather puts drugs up his nose and owes a blunted mind. A warrior knows that after the atomic war there will be one again with bow and arrow. A soldier believes that he'll never run out of weapons and ammunition. 
A warrior also uses elegant weapons because he knows that a bullet can be stopped. But the words crashes through the wall, flies over borders as a military jet and swims over oceans as a naval ship. For a soldier there only are destructive or killing weapons ranging from swords, rifles, grenades, tanks, naval vessels, vessels and atomic bombs until all existence has died out. A warrior when naked still is a weapon. A soldier never can hang on sufficient armory. A warrior is aware that war means to die himself. All soldiers are convinced of victory and that only the others die. A warrior knows when one doesn't organize amongst each other, only the rulers will do so for you, without you and despite of you. A soldier doesn't contemplate an organization, he's just part of it without being conscious of it. As a warrior hungers for justice, he fasts every evening and night in solidarity with the poor and the starving ones. For a soldier there are canteens in peace times and pillaging in war times. A warrior utters in humor, my name is Bond, Vagabond. A soldier believes he's playing the leading part himself. After the principle of indoctrinations of the media's propaganda machinery. So mother, do raise as many warriors as possible so the pharaohs won't snatch your children to make soldiers out of them. So it's December 2012, here I am in France, I'm hitchhiking, I was hitchhiking until 2 in the morning last night. Um, there's a lot of snow if you can, as you can see, <sighs> sorry, oh, these are nice trees, look at it, very nice, all these things growing on it, there's another one, it's like ghost trees, yeah. France is real beautiful, it's uh, 25% of the country is forest. It's not like people think it's like the Eiffel Tower only and then, you know, uh, the beaches and warm. No, 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 it's real, it can be real cold. So, here we're sleeping rough. I'm on my way to hitchhike and see some other YouTubers. And, uh, yeah, so the motorway is just behind there. Let's just see that through the there, there's the motorway, and uh, you can hear the cars, and uh, yeah, well, beautiful country, and, well, we have to be rough, you know, if you want to be, uh, it was a bit cold though, oh, so it was the inside, I had a good sleep, and uh, the French people are really great. It's uh, one of the very few peoples in the world where the people is real solidary with the underdog. You know, the people, uh, they're real solidary. They will never call up the police. Even the police are nice, you know. I, I talked with them for about an hour yesterday. They are, um, and I managed to, uh, to interview a, uh, a French minister of uh, European affairs. It was by accident. Well, he was not the minister actually, but it was the, um, I thought it was, but it was the, uh, the senator of, uh, of El and the Alsatian senator of Strasbourg. And uh, so all these guys were standing there with the, t of the, the French TV and asking questions. 
So I squeezed myself between all these guys with my little YouTube camera and all these guys with the big cameras on their, on their shoulders. So there I was standing and when I finished questioning him or asked interviewing, uh, suddenly before I knew what I was saying, I said, excuse me, Mr. Mr. Minister, can I ask you another question in French? So I asked him the question, well, what do you think is going to do about the Swiss problem? And the tax evasion and all that. So I'm going to upload that as well. Yeah. So here I was, sleeping rough. I mean, YouTube is not only about like sitting behind your computer, but it is mostly about meeting people. I mean, one day they're going to they're gonna close the rabbit hole and we have to meet people, we have to know each other, you know. It's a great means, thanks to the American First, uh, First Amendment, uh, American law by YouTube, it's bringing American law to Europe. Uh, well, in Switzerland, like, there's no First Amendment, there's no liberty of speech. So there's only YouTube which brings that in Switzerland and they're, they're fighting very hard against it. So um, this is one of the good things of, the, of America. The First Amendment. Well, it's great, it's fabulous and so is YouTube. So I'm not only sitting in front of my screen, I'm sleeping rough. There's a lot of snow here and it's bleeding cold. Okay finish up with this nice tree here look at that nice so this is my Bergen uh, the big one I think it's you know carries 120 liters I've got my arches of my tent here outside I made this especially because I don't want to have this inside uh, with my dust bag, with my sleeping bag. I got the mattress outside because otherwise it gets all wet. The bags are in here, you got my water bottle and I've got the tent in here. That's magnificent with the Bergen, the British Army. It's the best backpack really. Now I got my tent in here. Otherwise my sleeping bag gets wet in the inside. So all these things you need to put on the outside. So <coughs> I slept here and it's very important if you do hiking to get the snow away where you're sleeping with a, with a shovel but I didn't want to take a shovel it's an extra kilo so <clears throat> with my hands and feet because even uh, through the ISO mattress the body warmth makes the, uh, the snow melt and it, it all gets very very wet so take away most of it like this here right give you some information about doing some hiking so you don't stay all day behind the screen right sipping coffee after coffee <sighs> yeah actually the uh, the ladies like in the middle of the night on the petrol stations they were real nice the the third last petrol station they they just came like you want to have a cup of coffee sir for free uh, they're saying like I don't like injustice and where you're gonna sleep like another three petrol station before that so well, you can sleep here no problem you go you can sleep here it's warm well that was really nice it was really heartwarming I mean that's France that's the French people they're real solidary and then they really got good hearts there might be some idiots around you know but even the idiots they'll leave you alone here um, like if they're <laughs> If there is like a uh, God's elected people, I think the French come as near as this can be. No other people does, you know, uh, to my opinion. So I say vive la France, vive la révolution. So it was not a good idea, you know, to sleep like inside, even if it's warm. Because even if it is nice and, and you know, uh, you get waken up, woken up all the time by uh, just anybody walking past and there's light. So it's much better to be a bit cold and uh, to have a good crash, yeah. Okay, that's what I just wanted to add. So I say it again, vive la France, vive la révolution. This is Will. Hello, Hello. how you doing? <laughs> Will, <laughs> Will is a new age traveler from England. Yep. <laughs> uh, we got stuck in the mud, eh? Uh, quite severely stuck in the mud. 
Yeah, this is home, isn't it lovely? A wood stove in it. The dog. That's me, the tent. Nice farmhouse. <laughs> New Age Traveller from England. <laughs> yeah, wow, lovely, isn't it? The stove is made out of uh, Ford what? Transit. Ford Transit. The yeah. wheels of a Ford Transit. Yeah. Three wheels. Yeah, three wheels <laughs> and a brake drum. Like paradise. <laughs> yeah. Well, stuck in the mud in France. <laughs> uh, thankfully, uh, like always, French people are amazing, and uh, French farmer is coming uh, with a tractor. I'm going to give him a horse brass. Yeah. So we have a look at the. Uh, so this one is sunk in. Yeah, totally sunk in. Yeah. This one too. Yeah. It's a rear. Rear uh, traction. Yeah. Uh, this one is even worse. You can hear the tractor coming. I just went and get the tractor, and this is really, really stuck. Really, really stuck, stuck in. Here. It's like uh, the first World War stuff here. <laughs> so you know, shouldn't have trenches. <laughs> we made four trenches here. So here's the tractor coming. Is it there? Uh -huh. Listen up. Can we can hear, hear it. More and more. The French resistance coming, yeah, or the assistance. <laughs> so the, the corner, here's now. Will's dog. Splash. A doggy doggy. Oh, there's definitely a coming. There's the French resistance. Vive la France! Yeah. La 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 Try the engine! Engine! <laughs> Dave, well, well. Yeah. 
Hello, just investigating the pizza robot here. We found in an A uh, near Brittany. And uh, um, never used one of these before, but uh, currently I have a pizza developing on the screen. And what might come out in three minutes? Yeah, it's like YouTube, like uploading. It's yeah. just another Uplo 60 minutes for uploading or... Like you know. downloading a real life pizza, <laughs> <laughs> Will it happen? Is, is this America or...? The JPEG looks good. <laughs> So this is France, yeah? Yeah. So France is pizza robot. Well, possibilities. Everything uh, else in France is shut, but the pizza robot is open. Yeah. That's the main thing. It looks like an oven, yeah? Yeah. Okay. You never no, seen a thing good. like this before then? Never. No. Never seen one. You probably before. never want to see one again after you ate I, it. I've seen a, I've seen a risotto <laughs> machine uh, in Italy. It was also sold beer, which was quite nice. <laughs> But uh, this is a first for me. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs> I've echoed trucks. Yeah. Pizza fête à l'ancienne. Old fashioned pizzas. So I made it to Brittany in France and met some real solidary people. And they just said after only five minutes, they said, well, we give you the key or we, we open the door to the, uh, to the mayor's office or his, the, the garden here uh, where you can sleep. So I'm, I don't know if you can see it all. I'm here in a sort of middle-aged, uh, there's sort of a middle-aged thing here. It's my backpack. So I slept here. There's all middle-aged walls here. Uh, that was real nice. Real nice people. That's France. I, I, I love France. Yeah, some very old stuff. Old shoes. It's my tent. That's why I slept. Okay. That's great. That's what life is about. Solidarity. So in this little village, uh, what was it? Saint-Brie, Gogle, or something like that. Uh, the guy from this cafe here, he opened the door of the, uh, the mayor's office. In this w paranoid world, you know, of all security, this and that, you know. These guys just opened the door. So, and this is the... Uh, this is the mayor's office. In Switzerland, well, forget it. They only call up the police for nothing and you know, lie some shit together, you know. So, uh, the Swiss always get annoyed about just little things. And these people get happy about little things. Uh, that's the difference. If there are any lizards, they're in Switzerland. Cold hearted, you know, and all that. So this is uh, December 2012 in Brittany, France, 8.30 in the morning. I've been here since last evening, 6 o'clock, but it was dark. Now let's see how it gets today. The sun is rising. I uh, hope it goes better. So I'm going to Saint-Malo, Mont-Saint-Michel, Omaha Beach. So oh, this is Sword D-Day, Normandy landing. I just got here and uh, just put up my tent here. I don't know where to put it else. It's all beaches here. I don't want to put it in the sand, you know. There's a ship. I left the uh, flying trader today, flying trader one, probably flew back to England, great guy, and uh, so this is Sword, D-Day landing. Yeah.
You hear the uh, the sea. Was well, kind of cold this morning. There's the sea. Normandy. This is uh, Sword Beach. So there's Omaha Beach, probably somewhere there. So it's very cold. Uh, a bit windy as well. It says June 6th, 6, 6, at 6 o'clock in the morning, as flying traders told me, told us. Oh. Your oldest man, or you know, just die for nothing. Yeah, special forces, four commando. French commandos. Uh, more commandos. It says on on six six six. All these guys died of uh, on uh, hundred and seven hundred and seventy seven guys of four commandos. So they're special for forces. The SES came partly out of this here and um, well, that's what I told you these were the best the most intelligent the strongest the most beautiful most handsome man and they have to die first the other ones who work in the uh, military um, industrial complex well they can stay they're nice they are workers they don't think you know so the enemy within they want to uh, to raise a human race of uh, of slaves of um, uh, uh, the uh, sheeple, or we can also call them the sleeple. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, that was my sleeple tent. <laughs> so don't you trust all those generals and. Uh, politicians because these generals they say well you go and attack this and this and you trust them but they're all a bunch of Freemasons and Pharaohs and maybe something else as well so here's your grave look here's your grave what's my tent was standing here so here's your grave look it looks like a grave so don't you trust the generals the enemy is not the other soldier in another uniform I mean look at it now now we're all friends together with the crowds, you know. The enemy is the enemy within. The generals, our own generals, our own politicians, the financial elite, the pharaohs, the Swiss. That's the enemy, right? Shall I show you your grave again? Look, here's your grave. Well, go ahead. There's your grave. You don't even have to dig it. They do it for you. Look. I'm pulling up my finger. Look, they're all alone in the car. They don't, you know. And they must know that I am, um, I mean, is he stopping? Ah. <laughs> so it's almost getting night. I can just do this here. So here's this here. The June the 6th. And uh, this is a clock. It's very important. Symbolic again. It's almost like a sort of an obelisk, see? Not entirely, but we know they do sort of these sort of things. And it's pointing, you know, it's pointing at the six. This is a clock here. So it's pointing at the six. One, two, three, four, five. There it is, six. You see? And that means the six, 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 or the, the, um, uh, D-Day was at the uh, June the 6th at 6 o'clock. So it's this what that means. The 6. It's pointing at the uh, the 6. Here's the clock. Yeah? Okay. And here we got, the, I think it's a Centurion. The British Centurion tank. I'm almost sure. With the small cannon. 
and uh, yeah, I think it's a centurion. Oh, it says maybe. There it is, I don't know. Uh, the ball, nice. Uh, they have, this is Switzerland. They have a Canton, a Canton de Suite machine gun. You're dead. And always, oh, they call it the Churchill tank, wasn't it? Yeah, the Churchill tank. The Centurion came afterwards. Oh, well, there it is. Isn't that awful? Killing each other, yeah? Killing each other at 666. Okay. Well, I suppose the position of the tank, you know, it has something together with the monument. They, I mean, they, they do things we have no idea. Yeah. So it's pointing at the six, right? Hey, hey, hey. So I'm not there yet. S still a way to go. So yeah, I'm standing there next to the, uh, the you know, at the site where an enormous sacrifice has been taken place. Look, they, they have a lot of place. But don't you think they'll take me, yeah? It's getting dark. It's very cold. They've got loads of place. Look, it's, it's you know, there are lots of places. You know, you know, they don't even smile, nothing, you know. And uh, so the sacrifice, you know, the, the ultimate sacrifice has been done here. And they don't even take it, you know, with the car. Come on, look, look, look at them. Look. look at them. So why? Sacrifice yourself. Why? I mean, sad, isn't it? Very sad. I mean, if they look at me gear, they know perfectly well I'm going to Omaha Beach. Look at it. But I'm not from here. I mean, they don't even take the hitchhiking. So why? This enormous sacrifice, you know? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, there are some good people who take me, otherwise I wouldn't be hitchhiking. But uh, I have to wait for like a couple of hundred cars. Uh, yeah, look, there's another one. Look at them. Oh, I've got loads of place in the back. Look, oh, oh, oh. look at them. Hear how windy it is on uh, Omaha Beach. Uh, and I was sleeping out last night, and it's hard to film. It's wet. I'm sitting in a sort of a bus stop. I don't know where it is. Yeah. Trying to find the German cemetery. <clears throat> it's funny. The wind is going uh, towards the sea. It's probably very cold. In, uh, in the east, like in Alsace or Germany. So then the wind goes from, a, uh, from where it's cold to where it's warm. No, usually it's the other way around. Okay, oh. never mind. <laughs> so this here is just another warning of these Swiss terrorists. And as the uh, arrest of the um, anti-terrorist squad was, and they did even worse things they did, the Swiss. It's really murder incorporated, it is. A warning. And the murder threats I'm receiving of the Swiss police and the Swiss Justice Department. What will happen next? So together with the cat, what they, uh, they chopped off his leg. Uh, here was another warning they gave me last year. This was from the biggest Swiss newspaper. The article about how they arrested me with an anti-terrorist squad. They put three guns on my head. They put a, um, a bandage over my head as in a uh, rendition of the CIA like. Uh, there were armed uh, men all over the place. Shouts, threats, uh, handcuffs, foot cuffs. And uh, later on they threatened, they, I got murder threats, you know, so that, that I shouldn't talk about Switzerland on the internet. Uh, so, and they did far more worse, which I'm going to tell you about 
in the next vid. Um, I don't know what they're gonna do next, but uh, they apparently gonna make true their uh, their threats and uh, trying to uh, to uh, what to do what they um, what they said. Well, this is Switzerland. For no reason at all, there was a cop who hit me for no reason at all. So I put them on the internet and then they send an anti-terrorist squad. That's what they did. There was a warning. You can read all about it. This is, was in the biggest Swiss newspaper. Okay. Yeah.